What's up, college football fans and Mean Green fans? Tanoi Valente here once again with the Mean Green Show. Today, got a special guest on Patrick Cobbs, Coach Cobbs, the running backs coach here at North Texas and former standout as a player. Coach Cobbs, thank you so much for your time. How is the summer treating you? And, you know, I mean, just what's 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 kind of the agenda right now in present day uh, coaching life? Man, it's, you know, it's a it's a breath of fresh air. You know, the kids are they're working their tail off Monday through Friday out here grinding. Uh, we have the ability to get out and, you know, see them and, and coach them through some different things. Uh, but it's a good time for us to, you know, take a break and spend a little time with our families and take vacations and stuff like that and refresh to get ready to gear up uh, for this fall. So, you know, we, we need a refresher just like the kids to get hungry and, and get ready to play. And, and that's where we're at right now. Awesome, guys. And right before we get into all the things Coach Cobbs related in the running back room and so on and so forth, you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football, Mean Green football, G5 football, any or all of the above, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that is truly all that we talk about. All right, Coach. So we talked briefly pre-tape a little bit about my first, uh, I guess, interaction with you from, from a fan standpoint whenever I came here to Texas from Hawaii in 2003. And, you know, my my – my best friends in life were actually North Texas fans, believe it or not. And I came to that 2003 UNT Baylor game at Fouts where you, you know, shelled off a nice 81 yard run before, you know, having to tap out for the rest of the game because of a, a thigh injury. But man, what a, what a fun run that was. And I, you know, I don't think not everybody probably realized that you led the nation in rushing that, that I think it was that year. And, you know, just to kind of, you come full circle. Now you're coaching at a place where, you know, you experience so much success as, as a player. And now you're getting to reap a lot of that success as a coach, you, you know, as a, the, the, the slogan of running back, you get thrown around between mean green fans, but, but how has that been coming full circle, you know, playing uh, at North Texas and, and now coaching? Oh man. Well, one, you came to a fantastic game. Uh, yeah. it, it was the build of a long, a long deal. Like we talked pre-tape, you know, you know, it was a in 2001 was a tough year. I mean, it, it started out as a tough year, you know, being 0 and 5 and and grinding it out and then taking that big win against Middle Tennessee, who was undefeated at the time and had some top 25 votes. And and then, it, it you know, it our trajectory was definitely going vertical really fast. And uh, in that 2003 just was kind of the, you know, another jumping point where we got a big 12 opponent here and, you know, and and really dominated them. You know, I think it was 52 to 14 or something like that in that game here. And uh, it was a very fun time to be a, a mean green eagle. And, you know, we we enjoyed every bit of it. And so uh, having the opportunity to come back here, you know, after after playing here and, and getting able to coach was, I mean, what an honor. You know, it, it is big time. Absolutely. And. And I'm gonna you you said it again free tape, but I I, I don't know how to say your high school, your your town's name, so I'm gonna attempt it, and then you correct me. But but how did your recruitment? How did your own personal recruitment go when you were coming out of Tessumase <laughs> High School? <laughs> oh, <laughs> just man. real quick for for the people, oh. just it, it's spelled T E C U M S E H. I mean Tecumase. But how, how do you how do you really say? It? And how did it your recruitment go? Tecumseh. Uh, to come to Oklahoma, you know, it, it's a small town, just like you didn't know how to say it. And most people don't know where it's at. It's uh, about 30, 30 miles east of Norman, uh, small town, 4A school. Um, recruitment was slow. I mean, at, the, at the, back in that time, you know, it was VHS. You know, you, you, it was kind of a deal to where uh, everything was on VHS tape. And so it's not as easy as going on Twitter and clicking a link and, you know, finding kids huddle all over the place and be able to recruit. I mean, our coaches had to mail those things out. And I wasn't really active in the whole recruiting process. You know, I was, you know, from stage to stage in my life, I've just, I just kind of just whatever moment I'm in, I'm in it. Full speed. And so when I was in high school football, I was in high school football. Then I went to basketball and I went to baseball and, you know, track or whatever the next sport was powerlifting. I just, I was sport to sport. um, just trying to be the best at it. And, you know, I was fortunate enough that North Texas came and, you know, asked me to come on a visit and offered me a scholarship. And I ended up committing here. And uh, and it was my only one, really. I, I, I took some 
I had some D2 stuff. I went on a couple of D2 visits before North Texas came in. And, uh, man, I, what a what a blessing, you know, for them guys to come in, ask me to come on a visit, offer me a scholarship. And, you know, and, and we talked pre-tape, you know, about a week before signing day, you know, Oklahoma State comes in, offer me a scholarship, and I, I stick with my commitment to North Texas. And it, and it really had more to do with, you know, North Texas came in, offered me a scholarship, and, you know, I'm a – I was an hour, a little over an hour away from Stillwater, and those guys really never came coming. And, you know, me as a young kid didn't really know the whole pro recruiting process, and I was thinking, you know, I've been right here the whole time. They didn't recruit me, and so I'm going to stick with North Texas because it seemed like they wanted me, and, you know, and, and it's been, uh, you know, it worked out. It, it's been a blessing, and I, I made a fabulous decision because it was my decision, and I was I was fired up about it. Well, it worked out and we're all glad it did. But, you know, in today's world, it, it, it's pretty much imperative to have a social media presence as a college coach, you know, to to keep up with this, that and the other. Right. There's so many different things each and every day, it seems like uh, not to mention, like you said, I mean, you can just click, a, you know, a kid's huddle link and huddle link and get a, get a gist of you know the type of player they are. As opposed to back in your day, the VHS, you know, swapping and maybe sending it through the, the actual mail. I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, that along with it's never been more important, you know, we fans feel like anyway, to you just got to be constantly recruiting and not only recruiting players you're trying to get to North Texas or wherever you're at, but you got to recruit your own players just because of the transfer portal. And just it just feels like if your job wasn't full time uh, enough before all of this, it definitely hasn't gotten any easier, I, I would assume. But how, how do you approach those kind of things as far as like? You know, the social media aspect as well as just the constant recruiting yeah uh you know the 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 twitter and the instagram i'm really not big in instagram but my, my recruiting deals on twitter you know kids kids these days spend all their time on their phones and twitter and social media and things like that and so you gotta you gotta go where the fish are at basically essentially as a coach so i mean uh they're on Twitter. You need to be on Twitter. Uh, their links are on there. You know, kids put their huddle links. So you're constantly recruiting. I mean, recruiting doesn't stop. You're always trying to find the next one and, and you recruit your tell off on kids and, you know, and land where it is. And as far as in-home guys, you know, with the, with the transfer portal and, you know, kids grad transferring and all these things out there, you just got to build relationships with your own kids. I mean, you, you, you got to recruit your kids, but then you got to, you I mean, they got to know that you love them. And then the decision, if they're going to make it to go somewhere else, has to be hard for them. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, a kid feels like the best thing is for them to leave. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You can voice your opinion one way or the other. But if you're in it for the kid, um, you can honestly say it with, you know, conviction one way or the other and not just in it for yourself. So, you have to, you know, sometimes you give a kid, you know what, it probably is the right thing. You probably are a power five player or, hey, you're not, you're not going to go. I mean, it's, you're making a bad decision. Um, I honestly make decisions like that. Uh, you know, it's, I don't, I try not to get wrapped up in my feelings, but I try to really take it from the kid's perspective of, and give them my honest opinion. You know, me being, you know, it's just how I was raised. I, I, I try to give as many honest, you know, I mean, I give all honest questions or all honest answers and I'll tell a kid exactly, you know, how I feel. Now, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm going to tell them how I feel and, and my opinion on the matter when it comes to those kind of deals. But I want kids to be happy. And if he wants to transfer and I have to beg him to stay, he may not be happy if he stays. So it's kind of a double edged sword. If the kids already got one foot out of the door, you know, sometimes it's best to say, hey, man, good luck to you. I hope, you know, I hope things worked out for you. And sometimes, yeah, kids, and sometimes they want to talk through it. So it's just, it's just different, man. It's, it's a different, you, you got, they just threw more on your plate, you know, and cause some kids are chasing money. Some kids drew, grew up in hard situations and, mm -hmm. you know, you start putting money into the equation for, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids. I mean, they'll chase, you know, they'll chase 700 bucks, you know, so it, you just don't know. You just never know. Right. Right. Spot on with that, I, I believe. So last year, you know, Attaway, Oscar Attaway suffers a freak injury preseason and 
you know, again, speaking from a fan's perspective, it really put a, a pretty big rain cloud on uh, the, the aspirations of maybe the running game and maybe how the offense was going to run through out of way. Uh, again, our, our thought process as fans, right. Um, and then, you know, to our delight and surprise, I mean, you, you not only have a, a, an attempt of replacement for Adelaide. You have three that are freshmen in, you know, Johnson, Adeyi, and Ikaika Ragsdale. I mean, what kind of comfort did you get as a coach knowing that you've lost the assumptive starter for last season in Attaway, and, you know, you have three variable options that could arguably be starters in this league at at other schools, at some of these other schools at least, right? So, I mean, how how does, how did you guys take that on as a room and, what kind of feelings did you get, you know, again, seeing, uh, you know, those three really step up? You know, it was, uh, it, it, it's all a process, but, you know, we, our whole room, man, it's all about competition every single day. And so it, it's funny. And I, and I tell, I tell guys this all the time and the very, like, and I'm about to go back my very, like one of my very first meetings uh, in Bill Belichick and New England Patriots, he said this, he came into the room and he said, football was here before you and football will be here after you. So the best thing we can do is enjoy it while we're here. I mean, because it's going to be, before you know it, it's going to be gone. And so we take the same approach in our room. Like everybody in that room has the opportunity to play. And I want, I want the decision for me at the end of the day to be the hardest decision in the world of which running back I'm going to, I'm going to play. And those those guys buy into that. They come to work every single day. They bust their tail. And I mean it. And I mean it. If if, I'll tell them when we will go to practice and we'll go after practice, I'll say, hey, look, you had a great day today. Or, hey, you need to pick it up. You didn't do this. Do so hot. And they know exactly where they stand and where they were and what the what the practice looked like. And sometimes they know. Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they feel like they had a good day. And then we watch the film and they're like, I felt like I had a good day, but it was a terrible day. So, um. They go in, they compete their tails off, and one guy goes down, the next guy's ready to step up because he's been preparing this whole time to be the starter or try to be the starter or work his tail off to be the starter. And it's, it makes our room stronger. Our standard in our room goes up. So missing Oscar was – was nobody was more hurt than me. You know, I, that, I was shot in the gut when, when it happened. But – you know, we got our time to kind of do it. Oscar's a tough kid. He's battled his tail back. And, uh, you know, it's going to make the room even – I mean, the room is better with Oscar in it. I can tell you that. The room is better with Oscar in it. Um, but we had some young guys step up, and Akaika and, and Isaiah and Io, who had good years. They were all banged up at one point or the other, but they all stepped up when they were supposed to step up. And so – it's been fun, and I expect the same thing this year. I mean, I expect guys to show up when they're supposed to show up and play play hard when they're supposed to and take advantage of every opportunity they get because at the end of the day, that's all we can do is, is take advantage of all the opportunities we can get. Start with a crumb, and uh, you do good with that crumb. Next thing you know, you got a whole pie. So just little by little, man, little by little, a little becomes a lot, and that's our plan. Absolutely. All right. So NIL and Transfer Portal, we could talk about that for probably hours as far as how it's changing college football and everything. But why not throw some conference realignment in on top of that in today's college football world? And we know, you know, UNT is going to the American. I believe it's next year is is the official statement. Uh, But we had some members of Conference USA leave early and just kind of threw everything through our, you know, all the schedules, ripple effects, probably throughout the nation, quite literally. Uh, not just them, but just, you know, other schools as well. That being said, as far as North Texas goes, North Texas is typically plays an FCS school, you know, week one or zero, followed by another, I know their arrival, but preseason as them not being in conference yet, like an SMU or something like that. This year, that's not the case. It's, you know, week zero traveling to UTEP where it's about a million degrees and playing a really good UTEP, you know, have a really good season in conference uh, opponent. So there's no warm up at all. It's right into the fire. It's high risk, high reward. Do, but do you guys put any stock into that at all, really, or is it just you know what we we that's out of our control? We just play who we who we're assigned to play. 
Yeah, you, I mean, we come to work. It, it doesn't matter who it is, week one, week two, whatever. You, you got to be ready to play for every opponent. Winning's hard. I mean, it is. Winning's hard. You got to show up and be ready to compete your tail off. I mean, whether that's, you know, Texas Southern later in the week or uh, Memphis, you know, you, you got to come and be ready to play football against anybody. Now, starting the week, starting week zero with uh, UTEP, I mean, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great and fun challenge. We got to, I mean, when you get the conference play, your level of play needs to rise another couple notches. Well, we're going to rise a couple notches week one. So, I'm fired up about the opportunity, uh, or week zero rather. I'm fired up about the opportunity. Is UTEP's week zero as well? So, who's going to become? Who's going to be more polished? Um, who's going to be able to knock the rust off faster? Or who's going to have, you know, you know. Be ready to go. I mean, UTEP's a good opponent. They're an in-state rival. So we're excited about the opportunity. I mean, last year it came down to, you know, the last second. So, you know, we got to go to their place and it'll be fun. All right. Last question before I let you get out of here. So in your opinion, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Do you think UNT may have the most fittest coaching staff? And how do you think uh, you guys would fare in like a, a ring style mm -hmm wrestling match i mean we got you i'm not gonna ask you to take your shirt off or anything but we can ah. tell you're, you're still in shape uh, you know you got coach shambar coach latrell coach holly and uh, others coach bennett's crazy enough to wear shorts and you know whatever kind of weather so mm -hmm. i mean what what is your thought on that i mean do you guys have mandatory lifts you have to hit as coaches and what why why do you think there's so many fit coaches in this coaching staff ah uh, you know you just don't want to be the I don't know. I mean, everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody busts their tail, and you know it, it. It starts from the top and works its way down. I mean, Coach Latrell stays in shape. I think the baddest dude in our whole office is Coach Womack, and there's no question. Our strength and conditioning coach. There's, there's not a person in this building that would mess with that guy. When you got cauliflower ears, you don't mess with them. So I'd put him up against anybody in any place at any time, and I, I'd be right behind him. So, <laughs> so we, uh, it's fun. You know, we have a fun staff. We enjoy each other. Um, you know, I it, I could see our staff going against any staff in Conference USA, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, maybe in the nation, but well, hey, coach, thanks so much for your time. Great or uh, good luck for this upcoming season, and you know, try to enjoy the rest of your summer and uh, take some much uh, as much time as you can. Need a time off, but you know, we'll talk soon. And, and, and thanks again. I appreciate you, man. Hey, tell your son of Kaika I said hello. Look at that. Oh, I will. I will absolutely tell you, Kaika I said hello. <laughs> All right, sounds good, man. See ya. <laughs>